It's about to go down with Mark and Kathy. A live coaching show about dropping ideas. Mark and Kathy coach and have conversations with brilliant idea creators who are reimagining the world through the expression of their words, thoughts, and actions. It's about to go down, y'all. I'm Kathy Armias. And I'm Mark Williams. And Kathy, Kathy, Kathy is an awesome TED Talker, TED Coach, TED Organizer, and she's a brilliant marketing and persuasion expert. Oh, and Mark is so fire. Mark is a champion speaker. Um, he is an international speaker and coach, and he is he brings the heat every time we coach. So it's about to go down. We're here with our friend, Mira Hedora. She's the founder of Red & Co. And oh, I'm so excited about your idea, Mira, because it's this. And you are, you are such a, to me, you're such a well-rounded person. Like you think about, everything and so i loved when you came to this idea of why aren't we looking to nature more for answers i love that so can you tell us really quick mary like where did where did this kind of i know this has been bubbling in your head a lot but kind of give us some background of where it came from um it came from a lot of things but i think uh you know just to put it in context we're we're living right now through a pandemic and uh, we're talking about all the ways we want to solve things, you know, all the way, all the ways we want to get a cure, we want to get a vaccine, we want this, we want that, but we're not talking about the root of the problem, right? We're not talking about why is there a pandemic? Um, you know, what, what have we done to the earth? Uh, why are we not looking to the earth to actually like make things better? You know, why aren't we going to, we're putting a we're trying to find a Band-Aid. <laughs> um, so that's, you know, that's what a vaccine is. We're trying to find a Band-Aid. Meanwhile, these pandemics are going to keep on happening every, not every 20 years, every 10 or every five or every two years, if we don't actually go to the source and fix that mm -hmm. and fix why we're actually, why these pandemics are coming, why these wildfires are starting. All of these, all of these things that are happening in nature um, are because we we are kind of disconnected. We see ourselves as separate from nature. Mm. Yeah, I um, you know mm. living living in Portland, Oregon, definitely put a new lens for me. Mark, I know you live in Brooklyn, and not that there isn't nature, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. We got fire hydrants. <laughs> <laughs> we got trees. No, you know it it. It is something different and, and magical when you really get a little bit closer to nature. I mean, growing up in LA, again, not that there wasn't any nature, but you definitely can see that thing that you're talking about, Mira, which is you you put a lot of padding in between you and nature, and you feel like it's a separate entity. And then anytime you actually get into nature, you realize we're, no, it's not it's not the case. And uh, Mira, it's really interesting too. Uh, you know, thinking about all the ways that we've maybe abused the earth too, to, to that, that wildfires are happening and, and pandemics. Uh, I mean, what are some of the, what are some of the things that you think are our biggest abuse to the, to mother nature? Hmm. I think it probably starts with ourselves. Hmm. Hmm. We are the abuse. I, yeah, we, we, we don't take care of ourselves. We don't take care of each other. That's where it starts. Now, now, is that because we have, and I think you've alluded to this, we've disconnected, detached ourselves from nature. And I'm wondering, what are your thoughts around, how did we get to this point? Like, what is it that pushed us to detach ourselves from nature? Well, you know, modern times industrialization happened and we basically felt like we were so much better than nature. Um, you know, people had been doing things the same way for centuries, indigenous people, you know, indigenous traditions, you know, people were living very integrated for a long time, but then industrialization happened and it created this shift, right? This complete break with nature where suddenly people felt like they were better than nature. Wow. That's an interesting, that's an interesting thought, like, you know, that we think that I, I, and I wrote down, we aren't better than nature. I just took what you said and said, we aren't better than nature. 
and, and a piece of us, and, and the thing I'm talking about, about being connected is like, when you get out into nature, you feel like you find yourself, right? And that's kind of what, when I, when I heard you say, you know, why aren't we looking to nature for answers? That's what I thought. So that's kind of the connection between self and nature is we, we almost, uh, you know, we almost move ourselves away from the core of where we can find the answers to kind of create our own. I mean, is that kind of what you're alluding to, Mira? Uh, yes, and you know, when I think about when I think about industrialization, when I think about like the shift that happened, I also can't but think of capitalism, right? Like we mm. we, we got into this habit and this way of making money off of exploiting things, right? Mm, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, when, when, you know, people start to make money off of something, there's a somebody who's making the money and somebody who's being exploited, right? And there's, mm. there's a shift that happens there. And there's a, um, that's where so much inequity is coming from, right? Because we've completely like, um, created this you know even the earth right we're kind of we're, we're we're taking we're taking we're taking and we're not giving we're not giving back and for centuries people lived where there was like a kind of a cycle right you took and you gave back and there was this, this really like harmony that everybody lived in and now it's all about in a capitalistic society it's all about money and it's all about like you know who's going to make the most money and how are we going to you know get to the moon and how are we it's all these things it's the bigger the better the you know all this stuff and mm -hmm. what ends up happening is that we we abuse it's you can't but abuse things in that system mm -hmm. yeah can you help us out for a moment what is it that we're actually taking from nature, right? And I, I don't think you mean like we're taking the trees to build a house, right? We're taking the water. Well, that's one, to one part of it. A, right, that, that's one part of it. But, but what I'm ultimately hearing is that there's something deeper. Because when you talk about why aren't we looking to nature to find our answers, it sounds like you're talking about something a whole lot deeper than just trees, rocks, and water, right? Like there's some answer there that you seem to be implying that is there that we have detached ourselves from. And so I'm wondering what is that, what, what is that in, in nature that we're, that we're missing? So, you know, nature is this whole ecosystem that's in balance, right? It's a whole system that's very, it's regenerative, regenerative, it's in balance, it knows how to sustain itself. Um, it's, um, it, it has diversity, but not diversity as in a quota, but diversity as in this beautiful, um, you know, like the other day, actually, I was saying to somebody like, you know, you take uh, an ostrich and a zebra and one has amazing eyesight and one has amazing nostrils and with, they, when they travel side by side, they protect each other, you know, so we've mm -hmm. completely um, forgotten that we can actually learn from nature and that you know, we, we there. There's this whole ecosystem that's diverse that we could learn from, um, and that can teach us how to exist more sustainably. Mm. You know, that's why you know when I said we can look to nature for answers. There's balance in nature. When you look at nature, there's a balance. Yes, there's predator and prey, but we all we often kind of fixate on that. And it actually has this beautiful, you know, diverse ecosystem that we can learn from a million different, you know, a million different lessons, but we somehow just completely disregard it. Mm. You know, when you started saying that, Mira, I was like, I started writing, nature has all the things that we're striving for, or we're looking for, right? Diversity, harmony, a great ecosystem where we can give and get and and, and you're right. It's crazy. It, you know, when I really take a look at it, the way you're saying it, it took me a minute to like get into these, I, I needed to like pull myself out of my capitalistic, you know, my normal, what the norm is or what you think. And I just had to like pull out for a second and go, Oh, I totally see what you're talking about. I completely see what you're talking about. You're even talking about the system of nature, how, how it functions, how, I mean, more than just nature, like you said, Mark, more than just trees and rocks and water, 
it's just the whole function of nature is is doing what it needs to do and we seem to every 20 30 40 50 years you know go through this thing where we're up against something again and we haven't figured it out and we're not doing it right and then we tried another way and we're still not doing it right so is that kind of a little bit more along the lines mira yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely and something this is actually like such a small thing but i you know I, I have a Ayurvedic practice, so uh, it kind of comes from that. And Ayurveda is like a sister science to yoga. Um, you know, in Ayurveda, you always look to what's happening in nature and you kind of regulate your body according to what's happening in nature. So, for example, mm -hmm. we're in a very dry time of, of the, you know, the year right now, right? It's very windy. It's very dry. So, you know, you can shift the way you eat to actually make you healthier, so you can mm. eat a lot of nourishing foods, a lot of warm foods, a lot of like, don't eat dry foods because there's already so much dry and agitation on the outside. So don't eat crackers, you know? Yeah. So don't eat things that actually dry out your insides. So all these things, how we align with nature and how we look to nature and pick up on the cues of nature to inform everything, whether our bodies or how we behave in the world, you know, there's so much there and we don't, we ignore it. We ignore it. We totally ignore it. It's right here and we completely ignore it. Yeah. Because we've well, lost sight of what nature really is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's and not I, just a resource. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Because, and, 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 and that's, this is why I, I, I really asked that question because I think of being in a, an industrial capitalistic modern world where that's what nature is hmm. it's a resource to build something we need that's hmm. all it is it's something we have to hunt down to eat before it hunts us down it's hmm. the story of the guy and there i don't know if you heard this story the other day i sent a video to kathy about the guy who wanted to be one with nature so hmm. he went for a jog and then he turned around and there was a cougar stalking him for six minutes stalking him it was one of the scariest videos i've ever seen and it makes me think i don't want to have anything to do with nature either it's a resource or it's the scariest thing possible and yet that's what everybody associates with it mm -hmm. and that's what we're losing sight of mm -hmm. and i think pointing out the disparity of how we normally see nature because how we normally see it is what is detracting us and separating us from it and how we should be seeing it is what you're saying what is is how we can then connect to it so showing that disparity or showing that dichotomy i think is really important to the idea you're trying to share mm -hmm. Well, and, and here's where the problem lies, too, because, you know, the way you just described it, Mark, is that we've been using nature, right? We've been using and abusing nature. So like many other things in our society, we're, you're going to have this polarized view of like, there's going to be anybody who doesn't, who anybody who thinks that we, we nature's only there as a resource, will think that anybody who thinks that we should we should look to nature for more answers or something as like, oh, you know, they're just like super hippie, nature loving, like, well, you know what I mean? Like there'd be the, some weird, and it's like, wow, really? <laughs> but, but here's the thing. It's like, here's always the challenge with an idea. How do you make that universal? What, what is the connection that people will, where, where will people that don't even, where, where will you get to that point where you can at least give the person that information to, that goes, yeah, never thought about that. Mark, you you already kind of opened your eyes a little bit right now when you were when you were saying, "Wow, I've only I've only thought about nature in this way." And sometimes I think that's the thing is you're shedding light on this idea in a different way, but you want to make sure like the biggest challenge is like how do we how do we pitch this to the world, Mira? If you were giving this as a TED Talk tomorrow, what would be the angle? Like like I think we have to reframe nature as a life support system. Mm. Love that. I, I see. Like I love that. that. Reframe nature as a life support system. And as a mentor. I mean, the way, the way I was thinking about it, like <laughs> it's kind of a mentor to how we should be, you know, how we should be living our lives. Right. Because we need that diversity and that harmony. What are the other things that we need 
that nature can provide for us? <sighs> Everything, really. Like we can't, <laughs> the, 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 you know, the it, we don't exist without the air we breathe. That's from nature. <laughs> yeah. We don't exist without the water. We don't exist without the trees that we eat. You know, like we don't exist without it. And that's the crazy thing here that we we would die without nature and we don't even think about that anymore, right? Like we, if you give somebody, if you cut off water from somebody and if you cut off food from somebody and you cut off air, how long do they stay alive for? Yeah. <laughs> Not but, very long. But let's, no, no, but, but, but I'm gonna challenge us to think a little bit deeper than that, right? Because that's where we go often, the water, right? The air, what we eat. But I'm asking something even deeper mm. that we need from nature that makes nature really the answer. And when you, I picked out those words, diversity and, and harmony, because you spoke about those before. That's mm -hmm. not the regular food product, drink product, you know, lumber product to build something. Yeah. That, that was something deeper. So I'm challenging us in this conversation to think something deeper because I think where Kathy is going with this and I love this direction is um, if we want to make this universal, right? And not turn off those who are like, oh, they're just the, what'd you call them? The hippies? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then we have to help them to understand that, it, that we're talking about something way beyond food and air and water. Right. Because even if you're not a hippie, there's something in nature that we all need beyond the basics. So what is that? Well, you know, one of the things too, Mira, right? Like I, I know when I'm in nature, it, it, you know, nature's nature has so many other foundational things. Like it's, you know, we've seen a lot of wildfires in, in, in Oregon and it's crazy how nature will repair itself and rebuild and revitalize. Um, and will, you know, I, I even learned, this is crazy. So Mark, this is how LAI was for so long. I didn't know what a nurse log is. And, and a nurse log is basically a dead tree that's fallen over, but now is giving nutrients to the trees around it, to the, to the environment around it. Right. So even in, even in the death of a tree, there and, and you know and then animals of course create shelters and in, in, in trees that are that are dead um there's it's like everything is utilized and when you sit in nature sometimes you just kind of go yeah i feel really i can feel the power of how small i am i can feel that i'm just a little <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't even make it a foot up the tree like that, you know, like as far as like timeline goes about how, you know, how long it takes for a tree to grow. You're like, I'm, there's no way I would never see a tree from when it's small to, to when it's tall in my lifetime. It's crazy to think about. So I, I have a few thoughts, um, you know, when I think of what you just said, Mark, so there's a few things, you know, Kathy, you mentioned hippies, you know, I, I always feel that that comment is so so easy, just people to dismiss nature. Yeah. But like when I look at native totally. indigenous people, are they hippies? Yeah, no, right. I mean, are they hippies? No. It's like they've create they know how to create this whole system that works, right? That works for each other. They live in community, like you know, we've come, become these isolated humans, each one living on their little island, like community, balance, integrity, like all these things that are so like mm. deep, deep seated and deeply rooted in nature that we've completely forgotten about. You know, we used to live in villages, like all these things because the village, like, you know, there was a whole ecosystem, a regenerative ecosystem. When you think about nature, there is no waste in nature, right? Nature takes care, takes care of itself, right? So, like all the answers are there. We just don't look to them. You know, as a human species, we've created a system that creates so much waste. But then in nature, there's no waste. Mm. Right? How do we look to that and learn from that? Yeah. You no. Know? There's a cycle of life and death in nature that is just this like beautiful orchestration of like, you know, 
constantly regenerating itself, constantly like, you know, it just keeps going. And then in, you know, in the modern world, it's just all that whole thing is like so out of whack. You have the people who are alive and then the people who are dying or who are dead are kind of separate, right? Like there's a separation. Mm -hmm. um, and in, in, you know, there's rituals in nature. There is, um, you know, these, when you look to indigenous people and how they um, celebrate things and they celebrate cycles and they celebrate um, these things that happen, these, you know, when a birth happens, for example, and how on, you know, they honor it and they like, there's a, there's a real like um, beautiful ceremony that happens around life. And there's a beautiful ceremony that happens around death. And it's all about honoring these cycles. Meanwhile, we don't have that, you know, like a, a woman gives birth here and she's like on her own to fend for herself. She goes home with a baby and she has nobody around her. No, like we used to be around all these women, these aunts and cousins and this and that, all these women that used to be there. I mean, you know what? Take birthing alone, right? Birthing used to happen with all these women and midwives and used to be like from generation to generation, these babies would be born around women. Men were never part of it. And then suddenly mm. industrialization happened and they kicked all the midwives with all that wisdom and all that talent and all that intuition. They kicked them out and suddenly we had male doctors and we had to listen to the male doctors that had never looked at a woman's vagina before to pull out a baby. Right? Like crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> that is crazy when you think about it. That's insane. Uh, and it yeah, took us like fifty years to even fight to even have women be in the practice of medicine. Meanwhile, women for centuries used yeah. to be so rich in that wisdom and honor that that process and be around it and birth these women without any of the fancy stuff. You know, obviously, you know, Western medicine has come to save people's lives and it's really come to like yeah. do things that, you know, people never lived as long as they live now. So there's value in that, but that also doesn't mean that we kick out the door, everything that worked for centuries. Yeah. There's a way for these things to coexist. It's not one or the other. It's not black and white. There's so much gray that we somehow have gotten rid of, you know? Yeah. 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 I, what do you think of the three words, repair, replenish, and ritualize? I think those come from nature. I think those are, those are so integral to nature. Like, I, I, I only use those words because you said them, and I wonder how much of that is a part of the message and how much of that is the the natural process that you could be encouraging us to do as a society to repair to replenish to ritualize mm -hmm. kathy go ahead i see i see i see the head spinning i, 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 see, the, I see the wheel the wheels turning <laughs> mark knows me mark knows that i'm like when i'm like oh there's something no oh my god well uh you know i love that mark it, you know i wrote down i wrote down when Mira was talking, we've disconnected from nature and that's not a good thing. But then it always brings me back to remembering like, okay, if we have this idea and I think sometimes we can, like, I think we, the three of us right now are in this space where we're like, yeah, we can totally agree on this. Everything Mira is saying is amazing. What's the end game at, with this like idea? What can somebody do though? Cause sometimes this is one of those ideas where you feel small and insignificant sometimes. This is one of those ideas when you're like, oh, yes, we've done this as a society and it's overwhelming, but what can I do? And so I feel like, and, there, and it, it, it isn't as simple, obviously, as always taking every idea and going, okay, you can simplify it down to the, you know, but of course a person makes people and people make decisions. Like, you know, a person is part of a group. And so like, what, what? we should be going to that space for a minute. Cause I think we're, I think we're very clear. Mira started this off strong. Like, why aren't we looking to nature for answers? She came, she came into this already. The, she's thought about this. This is not something, but this is, which is awesome. Anybody watching, I love talking we love talking about ideas and an idea can either start at a really level that that's kind of like, Oh, this is a good idea. How do we explore it? Nah, we're, 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 we're well beyond that. Mira's been thinking about this idea. So, <laughs> so, so I have two thoughts. Two thoughts. 
Um, the first one is I feel we need to re-educate our kids about mm. nature and how they're, you know, that a sustainable future is found in nature and have that be an integral part of our education. Mm. Just the same way that we have to teach kids real history and not a whitewashed history, right? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. so that brings me to the second point, which is we need to get people to remember that they are part and parcel of nature. And when I say remember, I mean re and member. Like re member. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I think is that's what I think is missing. You know, that we are we are <laughs> at our, you know, we are at our healthiest, we are at our best when we remember, when we reconnect. Yeah. And I think and, that that is the task here. So that's a that's actually I knew what Mark I knew what Mark was doing. That's actually a really good title though. Like that would be a better title, maybe remember nature. Cause it, everything that you said, Mira, is integrated into that saying. And remember obviously has is Re, like you said, it's remember. And so people, but if, even if you heard it as remember nature, if, if somebody heard you start talking about it, they'd go, Oh, I get it now. She's talking about remember, like we're, we're upping our membership back here again. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Re and member. Ooh. Yeah, that is, it's so good. I love that. That's so different. That is so different. How, how do you, how do you remember how do you reconnect? How do you become one with nature um, so that you learn the answers? What, what do you do on a regular basis? Like what's your practice? What's your habit? What's your exercise? So I think we always start on the individual, right? Like, you know, um, Michael Jackson said it best, you know, if you wanna make a change, take a look at yourself and make that change, right? So you start on the individual level and you re- member with your all your different communities one remember with yourself like as you know your your body um i love i don't know if you guys know the site but there's a site called asknature.org and mm. it's by the myomimicry institute and they mm. have the site that is like you know you can like ask nature anything and it kind of like you know gives you answers for stuff and i love it and i feel like that that is an example of ways you can start remembering all the ways that you are connected you know and start with in you start in small ways you don't start with like let me just reconnect to nature like that feels too big and daunting you start in re like how can i turn to nature and learn how to remember and reconnect to my community or to my, to this you know to my family to my you know uh, like you can, you can literally start like with a circle that big and then expand it and then expand it. Right. But it's like addressing like little chapters, little pieces at a time. It's not like, Oh, I'm going to reconnect to nature. Like that seems, I don't even know what to do with that. You know, it's almost too daunting and big. You, I always say like any huge task, break it down to, to some, into small chunks and it'll get done. Right. Like you just take baby steps and you do small things at a time, small pieces at a time. And suddenly a year from now, you're like, Holy shit, look what I've done. You know? Um, so it's the same with this. How do we remember? We start by remembering in small ways in all the things that we care about. You know, we remember to the food we eat, we reconnect to the food we eat. You know, where's that food coming from? Do we know where it's coming from? Do we know who grows it? You know, are we growing our own foods? Are we, you know, we start by doing these things in small ways and that starts making a huge impact. Mary, you blew this up because I, I think the brilliance is when you said, yeah, I, yeah, so good. When you said remember, I was like, oh, that's like, it's that, that, like, I think like that tied everything together because now you're talking about reconnect and re, I, the remembering is in, is so good. I love that. You can reconnect, you can revitalize, you can re learn, you can re use, you can re, I mean, every, think of all the things that we don't do good at with re you know <laughs> we, there's a there's an anti-word there that we do and it's like it's probably dis right it's like we don't re we disconnect we dismember mm -hmm. our our we're dismembering our communities by 
by, you know, separating ourselves. It, it, I think that is the opposite. And maybe that could be part of the, you know, if this were a talk and you were giving it, maybe that would be, maybe you could show the both sides and say, we, we dis over here, disconnect mm -hmm. this, whatever. And then we need to re over on this side. I, I, I think we're starting to step in a space too, where, um, people can, we can make a universal connection and people can see that. Cause now, you know, Mark, you called it out. Great. Mira said it, and then you called it out. We're not just talking about how we go and use things from nature. We're really talking about like the whole system of it. I, the most beautiful thing you said today, Mira, and I'm in nature all the time that I don't really think about. And I'm submitted to like a nature lover is when you were like, Oh yeah, there's like diversity and harmony. And I was like, you know what? We're sitting around trying to figure out how do we, how do we be diverse and do it in the right way? And I'm like, and then, and then sometimes we try too hard and then it's wrong because it's forced and we're not doing it right. And it's like, nature's doing it great. <laughs> yeah. Remembering. I love that. It's so good. Wow. I, I really think if, if you would have to wake up tomorrow morning and give a Ted talk on this, it would be, I think it would, I think it would serve everybody. Well, if you talked about the remembering nature, yeah. And I also think that it has gotten to a point where I, the way you just broke it down doesn't only just make it universal. I mean, it really spreads. I love how you said, remember yourself, mm -hmm. remember your community, remember your family, remember your food. I, I mean, there, there's just so many different aspects of it that everybody can use this. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and it's, and it's beautiful too, because maybe, maybe just maybe I'm just go with me for a second. You guys, this is like, you know how I can get all like, there's different angles to ideas, right? <laughs> maybe the angle really isn't about nature. Maybe it's about remembering because then nature is just like the biggest supporting evidence of that. Right. It's kind of like, we have, we need everything that you just said, Mark, we need to remember, you know, community. We need to remember nature. We need to, and, and we can show the biggest correlation through, through nature, but it's really about us remembering. And I, I definitely would write it R E dash mm -hmm. <laughs> or slash or something. Um, but I think it's, it's, I think that everybody could take a look at their life. Like, if all three of us right now were to say, where have we disconnected? Where do we need to re something? I think all of us could, could get into that space and go, Oh yeah, I, I can see that there's areas in my life right now that I need to, I'm disconnected. Yeah. You know, Mary, I want to thank you today because you reminded me of many years ago, I went on a camping trip, you know, I, I did the whole sleep away camp thing and during sleepaway camp for three days, they took us on a three-day hike through the Appalachian Trails. Mm. I will never forget that. There's a lot of things. And I spent the entire summer at that camp. Mm. Walking and taking a hike and being one with nature and, and seeing the diversity, the harmony, the revitalization, the recycling, the replenishing, the repairing... The, the, the remembering seeing all of that has stood with me many years later mm -hmm. I think about taking my children on a whitewater rafting uh, adventure they never want to go again I've got to get them to go again because I've got to get them to understand um, about remembering mm -hmm. and, and how that was really an important part and I want to thank you today for reminding me about what we find in nature and that's why I think that nature piece is a really important part because that's what started it all. Mm -hmm. and, and to get people to think about, my goodness, how many people do or don't have a memory of just being in nature? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I wonder how many of us and how many of us you could inspire to either think back to, think of, or think of when you can just be a part of nature. Mm -hmm. Just sit down, look, mm -hmm. observe, learn, and then go back and remember with all aspects of your life. Mm. Thank well, what you for it, that. 
What if it was those two pictures too? Like, you know, that picture where you're like, notice the differences, right? <laughs> you're like trying to pay attention to the differences. What if, you know, what if you, what if one of the takeaways too, Mira, is that you have somebody go into nature and go, okay, cool. Write everything that you notice about nature. Yeah. The first 20, 30 things will be the common things, right? But what would you get when you think beyond that? And I think, Mark, that's what you're alluding to. When you spent time, even if you were a kid and you didn't realize what you were noticing or remembering, love that, just freaking love that, um, you were, that's what you were doing. It was naturally happening. You, you, you can't help it. You know how you kind of, you go out into nature and there's this like transitional period where you're still kind of like half in this world over here and half in, but then at some point, you completely transition and you start noticing things that you wouldn't have noticed, you know, but that's intentional too. Like, could you intentionally do it? Like I said, Mira, you've inspired me to like, and Mark, Mark's always our, Mark, by the way, is always our tester of ideas. He has these dinner table conversations with his family at night constantly after we do shows and all of a sudden you know mark is like pitching pitching the ideas to his family and oh, to see how they land so it's awesome it'd be really cool mark if you chatted with your family and said what is it that we need to remember like what can nature teach us about remembering see what your kids say like that would be interesting because mira one of your points is like you know re-educate our kids we have to start with them as kids we we feed our kids a bunch of you know, BS stories of, of our history and, and stuff. Why don't we teach them about the important things? And so I love this. One thing, one thing I'll say too, is you don't have to go to nature to remember. We are yeah. always in nature. Yeah. And, that, and I'll give you an example. Our bodies, our bodies are nature. We have all the elements. So we have fire, you know, when we have like synapses, you know, yeah. kind of, you know, spark an idea or you have your food being digested. That's fire. You have water. We're 97 percent water. You have air. You have space like we are nature. You don't even have to go to nature. Again, that's creating separation. We are nature, you know, so it's like we're always in nature. You know, you just have to mm. kind of. Think about that and just like think about that. It could be literally just reconnecting, remembering nature, even within your body. Mm. You know, you know, it's so interesting. This is a little bit of a tangent, but it, it reminds me when I, I grew up with a dad who's a doctor and growing up, my dad used to always give me like all these little insights into, you know, we don't just have eyebrows like they're not just randomly Ooh. there. We have eyebrows, so it, when we sweat, the sweat doesn't go into our eyes, so it goes around our eyes, mm. you know? We have a heart, you know, a more kind of grip-like surface on the inside of our hands so we can hold things. If we had this on this part, we couldn't hold things. Things would slip from our hands. So also all these things are so like, just, uh, I know when I grew up, it was always like, give me more, more, more. I used to always want to know more because that's, that really also gets you in touch with like the nature of your body and how everything is there for a reason. And there's, again, there's balance and it's a whole ecosystem, you know, and it replenishes it, replenishes itself. You know, when you get a cut, your, your, your skin heals. It knows how to heal itself. Right. So it's like, it's all there. It's all there. We just assume that it's like, you know, oh, it just does this thing. No, it does this thing. Cause that's how it was made to function. Right. Naturally. Yeah. Wow. Well, I love that. You don't have to go to nature to be in nature. You are nature. Well, that's consistent with the message, right? Because yeah. in order to remember with nature, we must become members of them. No, yeah. we must not become members. We must remember that we are already, already a member. <laughs> I love that, Mark. <laughs> Mark's like, wait, 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 wait. I got it. <laughs> yes. Back up for a second. Oh, Mira, it's oh, such yeah. a... I feel like I have, I feel like you like opened my, my heart this morning. Like I feel really... Uh, 
I, I feel revitalized already thinking about the things that are within me, you know, and, and, uh, and, and thank you for correcting that. It's like, you don't have to go to nature, but nature has everything that we we're, we're looking at nature and, and we're saying, Oh yeah, but we have that. We are nature and we have it inside of us. I love that. I, I, think I, I, I yeah, I was just going to say, I love the exercise that you were talking about earlier, Kathy, about, you know, if you are in nature and looking at it and, and writing down the different things that you see, but pushing yourself to see beyond what you normally see. And then I wonder how an extension of that activity is now looking for those same things within yourself. Yeah. 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 I know. I knew you're going there. That's yes. That's awesome. It, yeah. I mean, you start to look and you go, you know, you notice something and then you go, wait a minute, do we have, do, do we have, a, do we have a nurse log within ourselves? We must, because we, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, we, we can revitalize and regenerate, regenerate ourselves. I love that. I think too, Mira, you, you hit on a space that is probably very touchy for a lot of people, which is awesome. I don't think everybody takes care of their body the way they want to, you know, mm -hmm. and many times when people, at the point when people realize they're not taking care of their body, it's because it's, it's almost too late sometimes. I mean, your body can always like, you know, your body can do miraculous things, but you know, like for instance, when people eat poorly, they eat poorly for very long. And when they're young, it didn't matter as much. The effects of them not eating well, don't show up until they get older. And then they really see the effects of, of that. I think though, if you look at the trajectory of what you're saying in somebody's life, we can make that same you know, correlation to what you're saying. And it's like, everybody can start right now with taking care of your body a little bit more, recognizing what you have. I love that you talked about the thing. I love your dad, by the way. I know Mira's dad. When she was doing her TED talk, I got to talk to him a couple of times. He's Aww. amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's such a beautiful person. And oh my God, that's so cute. I, I could totally see that from your dad too, is that, you know, you, you can be a doctor in two ways, right? You can be a doctor in this way of like, oh, I'm here to make money and fix everybody. Or you can be a doctor in a way of like, I really love the observation of what the human body can and can't do. And what's the purpose of it? And so I love that you learned that from your dad. Mm -hmm. it's so Definitely going to be talking about that at the dinner conversation tonight. Yeah. Like, oh, you had another conversation. Are you going to take us back on a war white water rafting? <laughs> can, can we just talk about our nature at the table? <laughs> Do we have to go back to that white water disaster? <laughs> so funny. Oh, it's too, it's so good. Mark's like, Mark's got oh. this great, <laughs> he's got this great thing with the family. They, they're, they're learning so much through everybody that we talk to, which is so awesome. It's a, it's a great testing ground. Mira, I love this. I, um, I think that, you know, one of the things that's, that, you know, is awesome too, with, you know, taking what we're doing here and just talking about your idea is we've transformed it a little bit. And maybe it's not even the end all. Like if you were to give a talk, maybe there's so much more that we would add to it. But I mean, what are some of the things that, that have transformed for you during this conversation? And a lot of them came from you, by the way. We were having a conversation, <laughs> but it like, came out of your mouth. <laughs> um, well, I think the most obvious one is we started with a question and we kind of ended with more of a statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I love, do you like it too? Is it like you said in it, it seemed really powerful. Mm -hmm. And, and then Mark kind of expanded on it. And I loved the whole, you know, I, I just, I also love this dichotomy of like re and dis and I don't, maybe dis is not the right word. I just felt like it was disconnect, dis something. Um, but it's kind of the, this is what we're doing. This is kind of what we should be doing. This is already in us, but this is how we try to this is how we try to separate ourselves or, you know, it, it, you can, you start to see the areas. And I think if you start talking about that, people can go self-identify. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I, uh... Yeah. Um, and I, and, and Mary, I just want to credit you also, you just said it went from a question to a statement. Yeah. Let's stop questioning nature. Right. And let's yeah. start stating the obvious that we are members of nature, too. And if Oof. we can understand that, right, if we can understand that we will find the answers we need that we've been looking for way beyond the surface 
um, and, and, and make some real impact on the world. So thank you for teaching us to remember ourselves, uh, to remember nature and then to remember ourselves. That was, that was amazing. Thank you so much for this conversation yeah. today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. So let me just say, fun. I love that. Belief. Fun beyond belief. Mira, how can people who are, are fascinated by you, by your idea, by this, by, by, by remembering themselves <laughs> and remembering nature, how can they learn more about you? Uh, <laughs> you know, it's so interesting because, you know, my work is kind of separate from this this whole conversation. You know, I don't normally talk about this because I'm always being asked to talk about advertising and marketing and branding and all that stuff. Yep. Um, so it's actually really refreshing to me to be able to talk about something that I'm really passionate about that has nothing to do with my what I get paid for. You know, um, uh, because it's such a it's such a deep passion for me. Uh, I guess you know my social handle would probably be the easiest way to. Um, so at Mira and Kadura, so M-I-R-A and then K-A-D-D-O-U-R-A. Very cool. Thanks for saying that. One and only. <laughs> one and only. Absolutely. And by the way, thank you also for mentioning that because Kathy and I love the idea of bringing our friends on to talk about things that they don't always get to talk about. Yeah. It's refreshing. Yeah, yeah. It's new. Um and, and, and it's been great. It's been great. And for anybody else out there who would like to join Kathy and I and have conversations maybe that you normally don't have so you can drop a new and fresh idea on the world, reach out to us at markandkathy at gmail.com. Kathy, I, we always like to say it. You got to spell it right. It's Mark with a C and Kathy with an E, with an e. <laughs> Mark and Kathy at gmail.com. And we are ready to bring you in so you can drop your ideas because each and every time we get together, it's about to go down. Mm -hmm.